This is Neuroscience's Connections, and I'm Bill Mobley, uh, here today uh, with real pleasure in interviewing uh, a brand new member of our faculty, Andy Huberman. Uh, Andy has just come to us from a terrific uh, PhD period and postdoc, and Andy, welcome to UCSD. Tell us about yourself, where you've been, and what your first impressions of UCSD are. Well, thanks. Thanks uh, for the invite to be here. It's really a pleasure. Uh, so, uh, as you mentioned, I just arrived here at UCSD, and um, it's a wonderful uh, environment to study neuroscience, and in particular, neuroscience of the visual system, which is my uh, particular area of research. So, um, essentially, the only problem I've ever worked on is the one that I continue to work on and plan to work on, which is how is it that the visual system wires up during development, mm -hmm. and how is it that we can reestablish those connections in diseased or injured visual systems? Mm -hmm. So, those are important questions, and uh, what you're saying suggests to me that we we don't have really very much information about that. There's a lot to learn, I guess. There certainly is a lot to learn. I mean, the visual system has been a, both a model for understanding how the brain works and wires up during development in general, and has also been a real focus in particular because I think as human beings, we're tremendously dependent on vision for mm -hmm. un, unassisted living. I mean, I think all of us can appreciate how mm -hmm. driving a car, riding a bicycle, playing any mm -hmm. sort of sport or reading is so critically dependent on vision. Mm -hmm. We sometimes take that for granted unless vision is compromised. And so even though it's 2010, I mean, I think there's been a lot learned about how uh, the visual system wires up during development, how it works and so forth, but we're really still in an infancy in terms of understanding the basic mechanisms of many aspects of visual system wiring. And we're certainly in the infancy of understanding how to reconnect or rewire mm -hmm. damaged or diseased visual systems. So I guess if you're gonna try to reconnect things, you really have to know the the, the basic connection pattern. It would be really helpful to know how things get wired up in the first place. So what's, what's the new thought you have about this? What tools are you using, new concepts you're using, to sort out how are things connected and how could we reconnect them? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Over the last hundred years, there's been a tremendous amount learned about the structure of nervous systems and the visual system. Also, in using uh, basic techniques of electrophysiology and dye filling neurons, so filling them with things that uh, show up as different colors down the microscope. But in recent years, there's really been a push to try and understand how specific cell types and circuits in the visual system are organized. And the reason for that is that we've known for a long time that different cell types and circuits in the brain carry different types of information. So for instance, we're all very um, uh, uh, sensitive to the motion of objects in our visual field, and obviously this is critical for survival. You want to know which direction a car is moving and so forth, so you can, um, uh, it, that can influence your behavior in specific ways. And we know that there are specific neurons in the visual system that encode, say, the direction of leftward moving objects. But what's been completely lacking is a way to selectively visualize and manipulate and essentially study those neurons during development or in the mature nervous system. And so a lot of what I've done and what I continue uh, to plan to continue to do in my own laboratory is to develop molecular techniques, genetic probes that will allow us to see those neurons, manipulate their activity um, as in experimental models, and then also to be able to figure out how we can reestablish those precise connections so that if, say, the visual system is damaged in a human being and they become essentially insensitive to, they don't know which direction objects are moving, and that's a, a common thing with uh, many visual system diseases, that then we could rewire those specific neurons in very precise ways. And it's only with ways to visualize those cells directly and only those cells that we could think about doing that. So the wiring is key. We have to understand the wiring, and more than that, the way the wires are put together. And so what, what recent studies have you done that give you some insight into that? Mm -hmm. Um, well, certainly the, the precision of wiring is, is essential, and in the visual system, and in particular in the neural retina, the portion of our eye that extracts visual information from the world and then sends it to the brain, this is particularly salient. So what I mean is, uh, in terms of structure function and the precision is, is very important, is that neurons, where they send their connections, where they put, say, their dendrite, the receiving end of the neuron, or their axon in the brain, has everything to do with what kind of visual information that, that neuron extracts from the visual world. And so recent studies I've done were to find genetic markers for the different types of neurons in the retina that perceive different aspects of the visual world. So we genetically identified a neuron that perceives directional motion and in particular motion in just one direction of the visual field. So 
What's amazing is now that we have these retinas where specific neurons are labeled with a dye, we can see them down the microscope and we can look at those neurons and we know for certain that those cells only respond to motion of objects in one particular direction in the visual world. And that's very exciting because now if there's a disease or a developmental defect that miswires those cells, we can go back to those very specific cells, describe or define the nature of the defect, and then take steps in order to remedy it. That's very exciting. So, so gene expression becomes particular patterns of innervation, really particular cellular programs, and ultimately a behavior, something that really benefits our ability to survive. It's exciting stuff. We're so glad to have you here. It's exciting work. Well, thank I look you. forward to great things, and thanks for being here at UCSD. Great. Thank you.